Hi everyone, I'm Mary, Marketing Content Strategist at Swinomish Casino and Lodge. Today we are out at Padilla Bay with Bob, Christy, and Christine from Skagit Conservation Education Alliance, and we are here to learn a little bit more about their amazing nonprofit. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Christy Carpenter, and I'm on the board and representing SKIA, or Skagit Conservation Education Alliance today. We started working on forming this nonprofit, I think around 2000. And there were three of us, myself, uh, Bill Dewey, and Harry Oda. So the three of us went through the steps to form a 501c3. Our mission, to bring people together in the spirit of cooperation to protect, conserve, and enhance the natural ecosystems in the Skagit watershed. We came about after a watershed planning process that Skagit County facilitated. The committee was charged with identifying potential non-point source pollution in our local watersheds and coming up with an action plan to reduce those impacts, but without the opportunity to educate and involve our local citizens, we would have a hard time being successful. We just finished up with um, Skagit Water Weeks which has been a really fun opportunity the whole month of May with lots of partners who all host different events to help promote the idea of having clean water and what we can do as local citizens to help protect our water resources. We also have a Connecting Kids to Conservation mini grant program. Local schools can apply for like a $500 grant to help them with any kind of outdoor education. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Christine Longden. I'm Christine Longden, and I am the new director for the Skagit Conservation Education Alliance. And we like to just call it SKIA because it's much easier to say. <laughs> we did work with the fifth grade students at the Bayview Elementary. They made a passport book for the box. They made a stamp for the box. There was 14 topics that the children chose. Then they learned about the topics, and then they put all kinds of fun facts, like crossword puzzles or little games into the boxes, decorated the boxes, and then we put them out. So we went out and flagged the trail, and then the kids got to get within the vicinity, and then they got to make up their clues to get you from one box to the other, and then they hid them secretly without anybody looking. That was the big thing. They were like, go away. <laughs> so, so I'm not sure where all the boxes are right now. The kids had a fun day. The parents were super supportive. They had uh, parent volunteers. Uh, the staff at Padilla Bay opened up the aquarium for the kids so that they could have a special day. So the Skagit Letterbox Trails will be starting uh, June 30th and going until October 4th. It is a live uh, letterbox. The kids will be able to find a box, an actual box with materials inside. There'll be a passport sheet that they can pick up at the Padilla Bay Reserve in the front office. Bob was one of the gentlemen that came and introduced pollinators to the kids at the classroom at the baby school. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Bob Gillespie. My name is Bob Gillespie. I'm a retired entomologist and I'm president of the SKIA board. And I've been so for about the last three years. My uh, interest has been uh, working with pollinators and encouraging people to develop uh, habitat for pollinators. So we went to Bayview School to try to encourage the students to have a better understanding of pollinators. We're worried about loss of habitat, and so we would like them to encourage their parents and their families to put in pollinator habitat in their lawns and their gardens, and also encourage it in schoolyards, you know, golf courses, and all kinds of different areas that would promote habitat for pollinators so we can preserve them because we know how important pollinators are for our very existence. We, we joke about every third bite, thank the bees, so that's part of our stick, I guess, for encouraging information and um, understanding of pollinators. We're working with uh, Skagit Valley College and so we're trying to develop a pollinator habitat there on campus. They have a beautiful campus, they have a lot of flowers, but there's no plants and flowers in late summer and early fall which the pollinators need you know to extend their life cycle. We're also working with uh, WSU, the Northwest Research and Extension Center, and the Native Plant Society to put in pollinator habitat on the uh, research uh, an extension center. What can we do like after summer and fall? So we kind of forget about that. Sometimes we think about the flowers, the pollen, the nectar, but they need a place to overwinter. So if people can leave more of their uh, debris 
and not clean up their yards and gardens because a lot of them, uh, like 70% of our bees nest in the ground, and so they need that kind of habitat, and others nest in hollow stems and, and places like that. A lot of people like to clean everything up in the fall, you know, uh, uh, clip everything, cut it down, have it all nice and clean, but really the pollinators require that too. And the, the other thing that's important too is to realize, although bees are important pollinators, also flies are good pollinators, butterflies and moths are good pollinators, Pollinators. Beetles are good pollinators. So there's a whole host of other insects that are contributing to pollination of plants. And even bats and honey possums and uh, reptiles and things like that are all helping to pollinate plants. So. so if you'd like to help support Skia, there are multiple ways you can do it. We have a website. It's at gadgetcleanwater.org. You can also sign up on Amazon Smile. We have an Amazon Smile account. We have volunteer opportunities. Also, we are looking for some new board members to help guide us into the future. We have a great board already, and so you'd be welcome to come and join the fun with us. Skia is just one of the amazing local charities that you'll have the opportunity to support at our fourth annual Community Golf Day at Swimish Golf Links on July 6th. All donations from the day will go directly back to the charities, plus 25% of green fees will be split evenly among the charities. Be sure to visit SwinomishCasinoAndLodge.com for full details on the day, and we will see you July 6th.